Start the service. I hate to break up this good fellowship. I'm to get started the service tonight. So thankful for another privilege to be here. Thankful for another opportunity to come to the Lord's house and worship Him. Hope you've had a good day. Been praying for the revival. Really excited about what God's doing there. Church this week. I'm expecting something from the service tonight. I believe you are. You wouldn't be here. Yes. And what a good crowd we've got. Yes. Let's thank the Lord for. All of them being here. I got to give out a especially good to have Brother John Prince back with us. Good to be here. Been missing him. He goes south for the summer or the winter. Good to have him back. Good to have everybody though. Always good to have as far as Church of God, Brother Doug. What a blessing you've been to us this week. And uh, I'm going to just repeat what Doug already said. We love you. All of you. And I was thinking today, what we're going to need to do, we're going to need to load our van up. Well, we're going to spend a Sunday, Saturday night or Sunday night with you. Yes. Before we're going to have church with you. Well, sometime in July, we'll turn in. Pastor Doug, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> Change things will be our last night of revival this week. But what would really mean that we've had a good revival is if we don't leave it here tonight, but we take it with us all the things that we've learned. If something you've heard something this week, you've experienced something, God's done something for you this week. <laughs> take it with you, spread the good news. Take this ex new excitement that you've got, spread yes. spread it to the, yes. to the world. Yes. So uh, just before we get started, we maybe somebody's got an urgent prayer request. Somebody you need no needs prayer.
people we became acquainted with over in Elk Creek, real nice couple. They just uh, fell in love with Sawyer. I found out this morning his wife's got cancer. We're looking to see how bad it is, but just remember that family. But, uh, well, there's a little brothers and sisters. Yes, remember those? There was a little 15 year old boy from Barron Springs that drowned last night in Will Retreat in the lake. service night to pray for a good pastor as he ministers to us. God's going to uphold him yes. and help him. Give us exactly what we need. Yes. Let's all stand and do the Lord in prayer. Then we'll remain standing. I think we're going to sing a little chorus <coughs> for the part of the and ask Brother Aubrey if he would lead our prayer tonight. Yes.
Bell singers in the church.
We're pressing on, aren't we? Yes, we are. It's an old song. Y'all sing it with us. We lost two or three on the way. <laughs> Pastor David, you be getting ready to sing He's God and the Father, God and the Son, and God and the Holy Ghost. Okay? You be walking up this way if you don't <laughs>
good to be here tonight. Amen. We've had some services, ain't we? Yes, yes. Amen. Yes, Lord. I thought last night was going to have a second preacher. And that was the best testimony I'd heard in a long time. Amen. Amen. Amen.
tonight? Aren't you glad he doesn't ever change? He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What a mighty holy God we serve. Pastor Doug, did you see that? <laughs> Thank you, sister. I bet he placed that little one out there and you brought this one. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> God's good. It's all right to laugh, man. I see some Christians that they laugh their face and cry. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to visit with you just a moment and I want to get into the Word of God. I feel His presence here so wonderful tonight. Every night. It's been so, so, so good. It's been so good. We just love High Mountain Pentecost Homeless Church. You are a blessing to us. So thankful that we have brothers and sisters of like faith that we pray one for another and we lift one another up. Mm -hmm. You can ask my church, I don't just say this, you can ask them when y'all was right in the fire in 2021. I don't believe a Sunday went by that we didn't lift y'all up and pray and, and uh, lift you up in the Lord and we try to on Wednesday night on Facebook too. But y'all are very special to us and we love you so much so thankful uh, that we have brothers and sisters who love the Lord and who are like-minded and looking for the Lord Jesus Christ to come. What a day that's going to be when we get to be with Him. Isn't that going to be wonderful? Isn't that going to be wonderful? Your pastor is so uh, a very precious man. Uh, I have never, and I've told people this before, he reminds me of the pastor that uh, uh, performed the ceremony for me and my wife. And he had such wisdom and he taught me so much he's passed on now, but you, the way that you conduct yourself and the, the altar service, I've never seen anybody, and that's the reason I just turn it over to you every time, Pastor Doug, I'm not being lazy, I just, you, I've never seen anybody uh, that the Spirit can just touch and lead in the altar service like he does Pastor Doug, and Sister Linda so that has such a sweet, humble spirit, she gave me a card, and I know she wanted me to open it, but I I've kind of, you know, you get more childish the older you get. They used to tell me that, and I didn't believe it. And I'm beginning to believe it, but I'm going to wait till my birthday. I, I've been getting a bunch of cards, and I've got them all piled up, and I'm going to wait till tomorrow. So I'll, I'll try to let you know, Sister Linda, how much I enjoy it. But we just thank the Lord. And I've been every night this week, and forgive me, as part of Church of God, and need to thank y'all for coming. Every time I got out of the pulpit, I thought, hmm, they've been here every night. And I failed to thank them. They had to listen to me all the time anyway. But, but they are such a blessing. So thankful for our people. And we love them so much. Good to see Tony with us again tonight. I, I meant to call him all week long. And I told you we had a new computer system. And BizTrack the name of it. And I've had BizTrack on the mind all week long. But every time I think of night, I need to call Tony. And then here he is tonight. Thank the Lord. I want to preach tonight. You have your Bibles. James chapter 5. And y'all really, I'm serious about July. I mean, the wife's already talking about it. And so, Pastor, you check your calendar when you get home and see which which week might work good in July. It's a lot, well, I sort of said it's a lot cooler in Sparta, but you know it's probably cooler here. <laughs> it it's cooler than where I live in Sparta. But we'll just try to get together and have a, a good, good time in the Lord. Let me throw this in, Sister Debbie. Uh, we, we wonder too, now don't none of you men get, get, get wrong with me, but me and the wife's been questioning all week long, where is the man that used to sing in that choir? Where are they sitting at? I believe they're sitting on this side over here, ain't they? Well, they've got sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see at least two of them over here. And we just wonder, we, we, what's happened to those men? I believe they're going to be in there Sunday morning. I really believe it. I believe we'll be up there singing and shouting and praising the Lord. He drowned the sound. Oh, does he? <laughs> well, they're going to have to get up here and try harder. <laughs> God's good. James chapter 5, verse 7. Sister, I appreciate you singing that song tonight. I know you didn't look in my Bible, but that's what I'm going to preach about tonight. I have preached several different Bibles around, but really never had it to happen to me like this time and Pastor Doug kind of let us know what was going to be going on and then he finally 
or he called just a couple of days afterwards and gave us the date and the time that it would be going on. And so one evening I set to begin to study, and in one day the Lord just laid all these messages on my heart. I've never had that to happen. Uh, just quite like I'd have had one or two, but not every one of them. And I said, I'd go write one down because, you know, I've got to write it down. Uh, I'm getting older and the devil will steal it if you don't write it down. And I'd write it down in just a moment. I'd think, yes, Lord. And write another one down. So the first night we preached, on Sunday night we preached about being overcomers. Monday night we preached about a place by him that he has prepared for us. Last night we talked about God has been, has God been good to you? We asked a question. And tonight I want to ask another question. To me, questions, as I said last night, make some of the best sermons. And I want to ask you a question tonight. Very serious question. In fact, one of the most serious questions you'll ever be asked in your life. Are you ready for the trumpet? Amen. Are you ready for the trumpet? James chapter 5, verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, to the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and have long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. Be you also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draw not. Father, touch your word tonight. Let your word go forth, let it accomplish. Stir us tonight, stir us in mind, stir us in soul and body. And help us to see, Lord, that I believe soon and very soon the trumpet is to sound. And help us, dear Lord, to be preparing our hearts and looking into that moment and looking unto that time. Until I began to read these, these scriptures and began to study them for this message, I really had never paid verse 7 a whole lot of attention. But I began looking at that, and I want you to look. The husband waited for the precious fruit. Do you realize God looks down at us, and he is waiting? I think Jesus Christ, you have to forgive me, I have a vivid imagination. But I think Jesus Christ is anxiously asking the Father, can I go get my children? Is it time, Lord? Is it time? Can I bring them home? Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I'm waiting for that moment. I can't hardly, uh, you know, I'm like a kid. You remember being a kid at Christmas time when you didn't have everything every week that you wanted? You know what I'm saying? And how excited you was. I'm waiting. I believe in Jesus Christ is soon to step out on the clouds of glory. I can remember as a child and then as a teenager and as a dog. We used to have Church of God camp meeting in Charlotte. Y'all had it in, I believe, Greensboro. I believe I went once or twice. And I can remember they would have a banner up over the tabernacle and it would say, Jesus is coming soon. And they would preach and you would hear about Jesus coming soon. I can remember Brother Rick as a child going out on a day like today. One of the things I like to do is look up in the heavens and look at the clouds and try to see what I could see in the clouds, you know, whatever it might be. And we'd talk about what it was. But I can remember going out and looking up in the heavens and thinking today could, I'm talking about just as a child, because Jesus coming was mentioned. But why have we failed in these last days to proclaim Christ is soon to come? We need to walk out every time like Sister Debbie was talking about. Walk up and look and look at those precious blue skies and expect and think that Jesus Christ could step out on the clouds of glory at any moment. Oh, what a day. I walk out on my back porch at night because I don't know. He may come in the morning. He may come in the evening. He may come at noon. He may come at night. And I walk up and I look up there and, and, and I'm from my back porch and I see all those stars and I think, Lord, wouldn't it be wonderful to see that door in heaven open? Oh, hallelujah. And hear that that voice holler out, come up hither. And Luke chapter 21, I'm going to try not to be very long tonight. I have two bottles of water though. Luke chapter 21 <laughs> and verse 34. <clears throat> Here, Christ is telling us, speaking to us in this day and time, that we are to be ready 
that we are to be listening for the trumpet. Listen to what he says. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with serpentine and drunkenness. Oh my, this is us right here now, isn't it? And cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape. I want you to mark that. I want you to notice that word, to escape. All these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Just as sure as you're sitting where you're sitting tonight, the fact of the rapture is true. It is in the Word of God. I am anxiously awaiting. You say, Brother Doug, in the Bible, you show me the word rapture. I'll say to you, in this book, show me the word Bible. Might be on the outside. It ain't in here. The Word of God is, though, isn't it? The degrees and the law of God and all those things. How he talks about the living word of God. So rapture is to be caught up, a catching away. It's not to be confused. And many times we do this. I, I can remember as a young man and pastor, I've done some crazy things. I, I, I just I can't imagine how the Lord kept his hand on me. But I, I know many times I would get the rapture and the second coming all mixed up together in the same scripture. But he's not ta I'm not talking about tonight the second coming that he talks about in Matthew chapter 24 and chapter 25. Or that he mentions it, and we see taking place in Revelation 19, 11 through 21. Or in Zechariah chapter 14 or in the book of the Daniel. All the signs that we are given. All the things that we already see and come to pass. And they are coming to pass like I've never seen in my lifetime. And they, they are forming together. Oh, Brother Doug, there's been troubles. There's been situations. There's been depressions. There, there's been wars and rumors of war. But never have you seen all these things that he spoke about coming to pass. In, the, in, in Matthew 24 and 25, never have you seen all these things coming to pass at one time like they are. But these are signs of His second coming. And the rapture takes place before that. I'm longing, oh hallelujah, and I believe it's soon. Someone said the other day, I'm, I'm no longer looking at the signs of His coming. I'm listening for the sounds of His coming. And that's the way I am. I'm waiting for that trumpet to sound that the children of God might go home to be with Him. The rapture is a fact. It's going to take place. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Pastor Doug's used this. Any minister of prominence that's ministered long has used these verses of Scripture at, at the graveside. And these are such true words. He says this. In 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Glory to God. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be change. Brother Ricky, I can't hardly wait for my change. Amen. Oh, what kind of change is it going to be? Well, it goes on in verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall I put on immortality, then shall be brought the past the saying that is written, death, oh glory be to God, death, is swallowed up in victory. Someone was asking me before service about one of our dear precious sisters that, that, that they hadn't noticed and she passed away last year. Death came, caught her, and oh, oh, what a hole it leaves. And oh, you don't know every service how, 
how, how as a pastor, your pastor only can tell you, you look out and you see one of your children, one of your congregation missing. But thanks be to God, death is swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God, I have that blessed hope that I'm going to see her again. And she won't be in that weak body anymore. She won't be hurting. She won't have that old body that is corrupted and is mortal. But she will stand in immortality. Let me go on. So with this corruptible, shall I put on incorruption in this mortal? shall put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But now listen. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Child of God, it's going to happen. Amen. Child of God, I've heard that. Oh, you might say, I've heard that all my life, and I don't see it's coming. That's another sign. That's another sign. Oh, he's coming. Let me tell you, he's coming at any moment. He's coming at any day. He is coming to receive his church on to himself. So the fact of the rapture will take place. You might say, well, Brother Doug, what is the matter of the rapture? How will it take place? What is the matter of the rapture? Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians. You know these verses of Scripture very well. But it so plainly tells us how these things will be. My God is a powerful God. My God is able. There is nothing, let me tell you, oh, glory be to God. When God's Spirit begins to move, glory to God, we're going to come up out of that grave as our sister sung a while ago. Oh, dear Baptist minister, I used to know, would say, there ain't no grave going to hold my body down. Let me tell you, we're going to come forth. We're going to come forth on that day. Listen to these words, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. In verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. How could we face tomorrow without that hope? How could we face tomorrow without that blessed hope? Thank God. We sorrow not as others which have no hope. Verse 14. For if we believe, and that's the key, how, Brother Doug, can I be ready for the trumpet? Believe. Yes. Believe on Jesus. Trust Him for the saving of your soul. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, them also which sleep, sleep in Jesus will God bring with Him. For this we say unto you by the word of God, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord, listen to this, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Your pastor, you have walked the last step that you can with a dear precious loved one on this earth. But let me tell you, there's coming a day and there's coming a time, oh hallelujah, that God is going to call and they're going to rise from that grave. Glory be. And here's the part I like. And we which are alive and remain shall be called up together to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord, never to depart again. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The early church, when they would greet one another, and they would meet one another, they would say, Maranatha, the Lord cometh. I believe we need to start again in our hearts and again in our lives, but can't tell one another, Maranatha, the Lord is soon to come. Look up. Don't let the cares of this life and the things that are going on get you down and get you discouraged and get you looking down. But let us look up and realize that Jesus Christ is soon coming after his church. Well, Doug, you told us about the rapture being a fact. 
And you told us the matter of the rapture and how it's going to take place. But what is the purpose of the rapture? Well, it has great purpose. I mentioned these verses of scripture last night, St. John chapter 14. St. John chapter 14, Jesus, the disciples are troubled and he speaks to them. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house. My, I don't know if you feel that down in your heart and soul like I do. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, and I go to prepare a place for you. You see, I believe, Lord, let me finish. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Have received you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. I believe with all my heart. I believe, Brother Tony, he's got a place prepared for me. Not because of who I am. I'm nothing. I don't deserve a place in his heaven. I don't deserve anything but because of who he is. And because I have placed my faith in him and because I am his child and he loves me and he desires me, he has a place. He has a mansion. Glory be to God. You had to forgive my imagination. I got one. And I don't believe it has Doug Combs wrote on there. I told you the other night about your new name, didn't I? Or maybe it was at my church. I don't remember. But there's a new name written upon a white stone. I believe right there in my mansion, my place, my wonderful Lord, that he has prepared for me. I believe that white stone. You say, Brother Doug, how you know that? I, I just feel it in my heart. When we get there, you can see that I was right. I believe that white stone will be there. And I believe on that mansion, it's got my name, whatever it's going to be. He has a place that is mine. Yes. That's how much he loves you. And he promised me, he promised me, if I go, I'll come again. His promises are true. His promises are not like men. I've had men to promise me stuff. They meant well when they promised it. I believe with all my heart some of those fellas that promised me things. I'm thinking of one now, and he was the world's worst. He'd promise you, and, and you know, he was sincere about it, but I knew I never counted on that promise coming through. And I don't think it ever did. He's a faithful friend. He was always good to me. But Jesus is faithful. He is true. He is Jay, and he'll come again as he promised to receive us unto himself. The disciples were standing there. Jesus has spoken to them. He has told them in Acts chapter 2, and you don't have to turn there tonight. You know it very well. Acts chapter 1, he's told them. You go to Jerusalem and you tarry there until you be endued with the Holy Spirit. Spirit and power is the word that he uses with power from on high. And the disciples are standing there looking at the things that are going on. And all at once there's two angels that spy Jesus. And he begins to send in the heavens on the clouds. Wouldn't that be a wonderful sight? I know about you, but I'd be caught standing there gazing too. Even though the Lord done told me to get to the upper room, the Holy Ghost is about to come. I couldn't help it, Pastor Doug. I'd have to stand there and gaze and see, my, this is a wonderful sight. Those angels that were standing by said, you men of Galilee, trying to get their attention. Why stand you here gazing? I don't know if it blesses your heart, but it blesses mine. This same Jesus shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go away. One of these days he's going to step out on the clouds of glory with the voice and the shout of the archangel. And that trumpet of God's going to sound. And the dead in Christ are going to rise first. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. You can read that with me if you want to tonight. I've got here in one more place I'm going to read tonight. Now we 
beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, the rapture, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship. And I'm telling you now what's taking place here is why the purpose of the rapture. First of all, that we've got a place to go. Second of all, the church is going to be gone. When that man of sin is revealed, so, and listen, it talks about him, that man of perdition, be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, that as God said it in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now you know, and here is the key, and now you know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in this time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The church is going to be taken out of the way. Yeah. That's the purpose of the rapture. Yeah. To get the churches, church in the heaven of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Yeah. The book of Revelation. Chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. We've started preaching again in the book of Revelation. I don't know, two, three Sundays ago. We've got part of the way to chapter 2. Verse 19 of Revelation 1 is the key to the book of Revelation. And he says this to John. Christ does. Write the things which thou hast seen. What was the things that he had seen? It was the vision of Christ among and in the church, pastors. That's the things he had seen. Christ walking among the church. That was the first thing. And then he said, and the things which are. It's the church. From the day of Pentecost that we just talked about to today, the church is still gone. A lot of people say, oh, you holding this, folks. I don't know about you. You know, you were leaving all those things, and those things are done away with. Well, when was there a new church age? When has there been a new dispensation? Show it to me here. We're still in the church age. We're still in the things that are. We're still there. So he told him to write about these two things. But the third thing he told him to write about, and I want you to listen to these words very closely. In verse 19, and he said, and the things which shall be hereafter. Hereafter what? After the things that are. And the church is going to be gone. Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1. Listen. This is showing the rapture of the church. Listen. Revelation 4 and 1. This is John speaking. He says, after this I look. My, my, my. Puts a shout down in my feet. Well, you see, I know this is going to take place. I know just as John saw these things, John saw these things. He, he, he knew these things were taking place. And just as sure as John looked and saw that door in heaven, one of these days I'm going to. Listen to what he said. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up here, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Yes. to the church. Thank God, Brother Ricky, one of these days, and I'm drawing to a close. I just want to ask you again tonight. Are you listening for the trumpet? Are you ready for the trumpet? Are you waiting for that time? I believe one of these days soon, very soon. I might be at Parker's, Brother Tony. I don't know. That'd be a wonderful place to be took from. <laughs> hey, man. I wouldn't mind to be at reading right behind that desk. I might be headed home. I might be headed there. I, I, I might 
be in bed. I might be wherever. But I believe one of these days, and I don't believe it's going to be long. Now, let me say this. I'm not trying to predict any time. You might disagree with me. If the coming and the rapture of the church of the Lord tarries another 100 years, he does not do this word any in injustice. Amen. Does it no injustice? Amen. But oh, we have enough knowledge of this book to look around us and realize it is time. One of these days, oh, we're going to be going about whatever we're going about. And we're going to hear that trumpet. Amen. That Holy Ghost of God that's in you, oh, it's going to stir. <clears throat> I believe we're going to look up. We're not going to see one like unto the Son of God. We're going to see the very Lamb of God. Amen. These old hip bones and shoulders, Pastor, me and Pastor were going over our weights and pains <laughs> last night. Just in the, more than a twinkling of an eye, that body's going to be changed. Those precious children of God that we've waited so long to see. They're going to come forth from the Pastor Doug. Will, will, will the graveyards look like a plow field? I don't have an idea, and I really don't care. I really don't care. They're going to come. That grave's not going to hold. They're going to slip forth. Oh, glory. And those old bodies that we buried them in corruptible and, and with pain and anger, they're going to be changed. And we're going to meet together with the Lord in the clouds of glory to worship and magnify and glorify His name forever. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. What a day. It is time, church. It is time for us to be ready and looking and watching for His coming. Pastor Doug. When that glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. Lord. Are you ready? Yes. For the Lord to come in. Thank you, Jesus. That's Thank a you, question to us, isn't it? <clears throat> well, aren't you glad for the time that God called you out of the world of sin? Come on. Yes. At that very moment, gave to you eternal life. Yes, Lord. Our brother and I have just given us some wonderful stuff about you. Thank you, Jesus. How this will take place. Thank you, Jesus. We've had eternal life in us ever since we've been saved. Amen. 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 Lay down at night, having Lord. eternal life within us. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead will That's see it. you. Get that he should quicken your world. There'll come a day when God is mm. going to take us out. Yes. That's Maybe it wasn't way of the grave. I was thinking about, Pastor, what you said about. Our pastors' hearts are broken when people out of their congregation are taken, and you have to stand by the graveside. Yes, yes. You break your heart. Yes. I was so, thinking the other day, I told Linda, I said, Linda, we've done hundreds of funerals yes. through yes. 50 years of ministry now. Yes, yes. I remember one, especially of a little child in Spiegel that got hit with a car. Mm -hmm. Your little child, that seven, eight years old, yes, it was precious, precious, precious. Yes, Lord. And they called me to that that funeral. Uh, I didn't know what to say. I didn't have a word. No, no. I went to that funeral. There were probably two hundred people in that funeral service. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, I have nothing. Come on. I have nothing. Mm -hmm. And I said down there, I have nothing. Come on. I had one scripture with nothing in my mind. There was a young girl they called there to sing that day. Mm -hmm. She sang a song, and I thought the Lord had <laughs> identity in that place. No. There's something happened to me. Yes. And people begin to raise their hands back oh, to that congregation. And I forgot That's that true. that little girl was dead. Come on. That's she right. put those people in heaven with that yes. song. That's right. Yes. That song. Come on. Come on. I said, I can preach now. Yeah. Lord, I can preach now. Uh, what a service we had. And they started talking about that child being yes. in heaven. 
Yes. That child made it heaven. Yes. Glory to God. Folks, we cannot afford Ooh. to let this world deceive yeah. us in our Mom. faith that we yeah. miss yeah. what well, God has in store for us. Glory to God. Thank God for this revival. We've been yes. here in our hearts. Yes. Yes. We have people, every one of us on these pews tonight, has somebody that's lost. Yes. Amen. What are we doing? What are we doing to bring them in to yes. the kingdom of God? Yes. What are we doing to cause them to see what we see tonight? But listen, we don't have time to fool around in the church. I'm sorry. We can be revived in this revival. I thank God for yes. it. Yes. May God, God, put within us tonight. Yes. Come on. This last night of this revival. Yes. Our people, our family, our yes. friends, our neighbors. Yes. That are lost. Yes. That are lost. <coughs> I've done preached too many funerals. Come on. Yeah. I've done buried too many loved ones. Come on. I have a brother now that has cancer. Cancer, bad cancer. Uh, uh, are you? I am deeply concerned about him. He's lost. Yes, yes. He's lost. But this cancer gives me an opportunity to talk to him. That's right. Tell him about Jesus. Yes. So here on the last night of this revival, you know what I'm going to do. Come on. In this time that we've heard a joyous message here tonight yes. to stir our hearts. Yes. Come <coughs> around this altar. And yes. I want you to search inside of your life. And I want you to see that person that's on your mind tonight that yes. you want to pray for, that you want to see. Say, God, let it be. They can come and give us the music tonight. God, God, let you go and sing. That's fine. God, let but just be a good night for every one of us. Just to.